So I told her, five nuggets, Santa's in town. <laughs> as well acquainted here as if I were in my own house of profession. One would think this is Mistress Overdone's own house, for here are so many of her old customers. <laughs> well, here's young Master Rash, in for a commodity of old ginger and brown paper. Nine score, 17 pounds, of which he received five ducats, ready money. Oh, Mary, ginger was not much in, in keeping at that time, for all the old women were dead. And here is young Master Pace, in for a suit of some four suits of peach-colored satin, which now peaches him a beggar. <laughs> and young Master Dizzy, Master Copper Spur. Oh, young Master Deep Vow, Master Starblacky, the rapier and dagger man. Drop air, who killed Lusty Pudding? Oh, I'm Mr. Fourth Light, the tilter. Master Shooty, the great adventurer. And, um, uh, oh. And Wild Half Can, who killed Potts, and some 40 others. All great doers in the trade, who now stand for the Lord's sake. Sirrah! Bring Barnardine hither! That's Barnardine! Pray, come forth and be hanged! What ho, Barnardine! Pox on your throats! Who makes that noise there? What are you? To friends, the hangman. Pray, come forth and be executed. Away, oh, you rogue away. I am sleepy. <laughs> awaken him. Tell him he must awaken him quickly, too. Pray, sir, come forth uh, and be hanged and sleep thereafter. Go in, Joy. Fetch him out. Oh, he's coming, sir. He's coming. I can hear his straw rustling. Is the axe upon the block, sirrah? Very ready, sir. How oh, now, Borson? What's the news with you? Truly, sir, I desire you clap your hands in prayer, for the warrant has come. <laughs> you rogue, I've been drinking all night. I'm not fitted for it. Oh, but sir. <laughs> He that drinks all night and is hanged the times in the morning and may sleep the sounder forever after. Look, your ghostly father comes. Do we just now, think you? Sir, bound by my charity and hearing how hastily you are to depart, I am come to advise you, comfort you, and pray with you. Friar! Not I! I have been drinking hard all night. And I will have more time to prepare me. <laughs> I will not consent to die today. <laughs> uh, but, sir, th therefore, I beseech you, look forward on the journey you shall know. I swear I will not die today <laughs> for any man's persuasion. <laughs> Oh, but, sir, I hear you. Not a word. If you have anything to say to me, come to my ward. <laughs> For thence will I not today. <laughs> uh, unfit to live or die. Oh, gravel heart. After him, fellas, bring him to the block. A creature unprepared, unmeet for death. <laughs> and to transport him in the mind, he is were damnable. Mm. Here in the prison, Father, there died this morning of a cruel fever one Ramsey, a most notorious pirate, and a man of Claudio's years. His beard and his head, just of his color. What if we do omit this reprobate until he were well inclined and satisfy the deputy with a visage of Ragazine, more like to Claudio? is an accident that heaven provides. Dispatch it presently. Of the hour draws on, prefixed by Angelo. See this be done and sent according to command. 
Must I persuade this rude wretch willingly to die? <laughs> it shall be done, sir, presently. But Barnadine must die this afternoon. And how shall we continue, Claudio, to save me from the danger that might occur if he were known alive? Let this be done. Put them in secret holds, both Barnadine and Claudio. Ere twice the son hath made his journal greeting to the undergeneration, you shall see your safety manifested. I am your free dependent. Quick dispatch and send the head to Angelo. Now will I write letters to Angelo. She, the provost, will deliver them. Whose witness shall bear to him that I am near at home, and, by grand injunction, am bound to enter publicly. Him will I desire to meet me at the consecrated fount a league below the city. From thence, by cold gradation and well-balanced form, we shall proceed with Angelo. Here is the head. <laughs> <laughs> I'll carry it myself. Convenient, is it? Make a swift return, for I shall commune with you of such things and want no ear but yours. I'll make all speed. What ho, peace here. The tongue of Isabel. She comes to know if yet her brother's pardon become hither. But I will keep her ignorant of her good to make her heavenly comforts of despair when it is least expected. Good morning to you, fair and gracious daughter. The better given me by so holy a man. Hath the deputy yet said my brother's pardon? He hath released him, Isabel, from the world. His head is off and sent to Angelo. Nay, it is not so. It is no other. Show your wisdom, daughter, in your close patience. I will chew him and pluck out his eyes! Oh, you will not be admitted to his sight. Oh, injurious world! Unhappy Claudio! Wretched Isabel! Most damned Angelo! Oh, this nor hurts him, nor profit you a jot. Forbear it, therefore. Give your cause to heaven. But mark what I say. And you shall find by every syllable a faithful verity. The duke comes home tomorrow. Nay, dry your eyes. One of our covet and his confessor gives me this instance. Already she hath carried notice to Aeschylus and Angelo, who do prepare to meet him at the gate, there to give up their power. If you can, pace your wisdom to the good path that I would wish you go, and you shall have your bosom on this wretch, grace of the duke, Revenges to your heart and general honor. I am directed by you. Take then this letter to Friar Peter. Sit that he sends me of the duke's return. Say by this token that I desire him to meet me at Mariana's house tonight. Her cause and yours I will perfect him withal, and he will bear you before the duke, and to the head of Angelo accuse him home and home. For my poor self, I am combined by a sacred vow and shall be absent. When you with this letter, command these fretting waters from your eyes with a light heart. Trust not my holy order if I pervert your course. Who's here? <laughs> Good evening, Friar. Where's the provost? Not within, sir. Oh, pretty Isabella. It'll fail my heart to see thine eyes so red. I must be patient. I am fain to sup and dine on water and bran. I dare not, lest my head fill my belly. A fruitful meal would set me to it. But they say the Duke will be here tomorrow. By my troth, Isabel, I love thy brother. If the old fantastical Duke of Dark Corners had been home, he had lived. <clears throat> Sir. The Duke is marvelous little beholding to your reports, but the best is, oh. he lives not in them. Mm, thou knowest not the Duke so well as I do. He's a better woodman than you take him for. Well, you'll forswear this one day. <laughs> Fare you well. Ah, hey, tarry a moment, Friar. I shall tell thee pretty tales of the Duke. Oh, you have told me too many of him, sir, if they be true. <laughs> if not true, none were enough. Ah. I was once before him for getting a wench with child. Did you such a thing? Marry did I, though I was fain to forswear it. They would else have married me to the rotten meddler. Sir, your company is fairer than honest. 
Rest you well. Ah, hey, hey, hey. I'll walk with feet to the lane's oh, end. Oh, no, 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 no. Now, if body talk of Finney, we'll have very little of it. <laughs> uh, nay, Friar, I am a kind of a burr. I shall stick. So I said, oh, no, no.